Hello, folks. Uh, good evening. It's another Friday. Uh, it, welcome to Journalist Hangout. You say it's number one. We consider it the busiest and most engaging 60 minutes on TV. I'm Citizen Jones. Welcome. Now, today on the program, former governor of Kebbi State, Senator Adamo Aliero, speaks with journalist uh, Hangout, JH, on why he dumped the APC for the PDP. Uh, let me report, I'm hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju. So the one-on-one -on -one is between the two of us and the distinguished senator. Uh, Jide, I greet you. Good evening. Good evening, Citizen Jones. All right, so the team is ready. I hope you are. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, of course, you heard, as I signed posted at the beginning, we have a one-on-one -on -one with former governor of Kebbi State, and I'm talking about uh, uh, Senator Aliero. Um, Aliero. Yeah, uh, Senator Aliero quit the a APC formally. I think early today, you know, earlier on today. Um, you did, we, 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 he, he's not quite ready for us, but we, we are making ready to wor welcome him. But let's talk about defection. It's become um, common in, in, with politicians, and nobody's surprised, except that some defections and the timing will continue to boggle the mind. Yes, um, this is the season. And um, if you are in a party, and some folks see you as a threat. They will do everything possible to frustrate you out of the party so that they can have their way. Uh, mm -hmm. President Buhari warned the APC to be transparent in the course of the primaries so that the party doesn't lose some popular individuals Mm. To the to anyway. the arrivals, yeah. To the point that such popular uh, uh, politicians can then help the opponent, I mean the rival party, to defeat the APC. He warned them yeah. and talked about the fact that in the past this had worked against the party. You know, so naturally, you would expect that uh, <coughs> because of that warning by the president. The kind of crisis that uh, we have seen in Kirby State will not uh, uh, realize it, but that's not what has happened. We've seen now the member of the House of Assembly from Rewa local government of Kirby State mm -hmm. is going to the PDP. The Kirby State Deputy Speaker, Honorable Muhammad Buhari, has also gone to the PDP. The member House of Representatives from Gwandu local government, Honorable Habibu Labo, has also come to the APC. Mm. The member House of Representatives representing Aliero Jega and Gwandu, Honorable Muhammad Umar Jega, has also gone to the PDP. The Senate leader, Senator Yahya Abdullah, mm. has also joined the PDP. Wow. Wow. Now, the former governor of Kebbi State, Seydou Usman Dakingeri, has also gone to the PDP. The member House of Representatives representing Kalgo and Buza, Honorable Belo Yakubu, Rilisko, has also joined wow. the PDP. Just and look. then the big man seen as the most powerful politician in Kebbi State, Kebi, yeah. Senator Adamu Aliero, two-time governor, a former minister of the FCT, and currently is a serving senator has also joined the the um, pdp from apc these are worrying signs when powerful politicians as many as we have seen in this case join the rival party it's, it's a very bad sign and at this point in time not not when you are approaching you know. the general election not when you want to ensure that you remain in power at the center. So this, this oh, kind of what should bother you some more would be, generally speaking, Nigerian politicians have learned nothing. They've forgotten nothing. And uh, 
they refuse to learn new th tricks, you know. Yes, it's just everything you can blame on selfishness. The politician sees politics as a zero-sum game. Mm. He wants to appropriate everything that is available. He does not brook competition. No, not a means to an end, but the end in, it in itself. Yes, of course. Mm. He does not mm. want competition. He wants to be the only fish in the pond. He does not want other fishes to 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 to, to, to get to, even, to breathe to to get into the <laughs> pond with him. So he, he he wants to appropriate all that is available. If you see governors, the Nigerian governors are a selfish lot. Governors want to go to the Senate. Yeah. At the same time, they want to um, bring the person that will succeed them. Hey, ideally, hey, hey. ideally, you should just take one of the two. If yeah. you want to go to the yeah. Senate, then don't try to produce mm. your own uh, successor. You, you know the story of how to get a monkey, mm. put a nut or whatever, a, 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 a finger of banana in a cookie jar, mm. and uh, create the opening for the hand. If it, the hand goes in, yes. if it does not take the, this thing, even when he grabs the, the banana, he, mm. he, he can't, he knows if he does that, mm. the, there's no way of uh, pulling out the hand. Yes. So that's the politician. So he, you said a zero-sum game. Mm. It, the, you think his life depends on it. You yes, know? of course, politics is a career, here. Yeah. <laughs> We have full, full a time. good number of career politicians who, who don't do anything. Once the political season, even when we had the military era, mm. they were like fish out of water because for them, politics is the beginning and the end. L let me humor you a little. You know, there's a, a former Senate president who is a medical doctor, and my friend said, oh boy, if that man won't inject you today, you go agree? I said, I'm... Because he has not been in practice, I know go, I know go yeah, agree. It's rusty, so it's rusty. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Mm. So you think politics is just the way of life, and at the same time they meddle the thing up, they mess the thing up yes. for 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 their comfort, you know, for the, just for their own good. You know, they are not interested in uh, the rest of us. If we can continue to have people who are people-centered, mm. come more and more into politics. Yeah. They can make politics much more attractive, much more interesting to ordinary folks. And, and, and the folks on the street won't consider politics as dirty, as dangerous, and so on, you know. In fact, a lot more of our, of, of our people would want to get involved. For now, there are many people that you don't even talk to them about politics. Mm. You say, no, 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 I'm not interested. Tell me because, something else. Because the politician has not set the right example. Only a few of them can actually stand up and be counted when it comes to uh, parameters like integrity, honesty, yeah. and the rest of that. As soon as the distinguished uh, senator comes on air, uh, I'm, I feel like asking him, when you were going to defect or jump ship, did you tell your constituency or your constituents? Did they say yes or, n or no, you don't? You know, and, and stuff no, like that. I can hazard um, an answer. Hmm. This was one defection that the people had expected for some time. Uh, as, a, as a politician with tremendous following, what you expect will first happen is that his own supporters will be the first to move. Okay. And then the big okay. man, the big man moves last. Like the big that's masquerade. What, what, that's what they usually do. Mm. You know, look at someone like um, um, former governor of Fulgon State, okay. Benga Daniel. Yeah. Okay. Benga Daniel's loyalists had been jumping. I mean, had been joining the APC, and Benga Daniel felt loyal to the PDP. He was the campaign manager mm. for Atiku, and he successfully steered Atiku to victory in the primaries in Port Harcourt. Yeah. But more and more of his supporters were leaving the party. 
And at a point, it felt like an orphan. A, a loner, yeah. Yes, it felt like a fish, a fish out of water. So he had no choice to invariably go and join mm -hmm. his supporters in the APC, where they had, they had found uh, a natural habitat. So for him, what is a politician without his uh, yeah, uh, uh, supporters? Yeah. You know, a politician, the strength of a politician is, is measured by how many supporters he's got, by how many people he can summon at the snap of yeah. his fingers. Mm. People who are truly loyal. But if all of those people, or most of them, had crossed to the other side, you then feel alone. Yeah. So if you do not go to join them, so I, that I was have, I, that was how he was feeling, and ultimately, he had no choice. OGD mm. had to eventually go he, and join. You know, you talked about especially with his own friend Bola Metinumbu. Okay. You know. Okay. Uh, having a project as important as wanting to become the president of Nigeria. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you, you talked about um, politicians affecting the 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 people positively. You know, when we talk about Senator Adamo Alero, former governor of Kebi, my mind readily goes to Lake Rice. I remember, we will talk about that mm -hmm. in the course of the chat, but, yeah. but then I, I, Lake Rice came as a, what you might call a, a big relief. You know, it, that it was possible. It was possible to yes. do the rice thing here because we have about 30 30 varieties we are understanding in this country. The, the resources uh, are there. The land, the arable land is there. So he just had to exploit that opportunity, you know. All right. Jide, I, I hear our man of the moment is ready for us, so we might as well turn things over to him. Um, so, um, folks, let's uh, join Senator Adamu Alero former governor of Kebi State, is our guest this evening. So I say good evening to you, Your Excellency. Good evening. Uh, good evening, and uh, nice uh, meeting you. Yeah. Uh, I'm here with uh, my colleague, uh, Baba Jide Otitoju. He greets you, too. It's a pleasure seeing you, uh, Senator. Okay, Baba Jide, good evening, uh, it's sir. a pleasure also meeting you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Your, uh, Your Excellency, the, the big news is, is here. Uh, you have dumped the APC, uh, which you helped solidify for the PDP. As a former two-term governor, a, a former minister, now senator, why did you take the jump? Well, I had to do that because my people got fed up was what the governor was doing to them. They have been patient, they have been tolerant, and they have waited for over nine months to see whether there could be a change. There have been uh, several reconciliation moves being initiated either by the party headquarters or by leaders in the zone or by even the presidency, but all fell on deaf ears. The governor refused to see reason. Uh, the bone of contention was actually the conduct of world congresses that was done uh, at the world level, at the local government level, and also at the state level. All the party executives that were loyal to either myself or the Senate leader were removed from the list, despite the fact that uh, there was an earlier agreement reached among all the stakeholders that only those that died, those that have left the party, those that are incapable of performing or discharging their duties uh, should be removed. But uh, when the Congresses were conducted. A list was sent to the government house. The government sat. The, the governor sat down and changed close to about 95 percent of the executive at the world level and even at the state level. 
to the extent that he removed the chairman of the party at the state level, he removed the financial secretary, he removed the treasurer, he went and removed even the deputy speaker and the speaker, simply because of their alleged closeness to either myself or the Senate leader. So there was a, an attempt to really alienate all our supporters in the APC by the governor and mm. uh, his cohorts. And we felt that uh, this is not what we agreed on as far back as 2015 when we brought him. Uh, yes, at the time we brought him, he had no delegate, not a single delegate. In fact, the delegates made up their mind to elect uh, the current Senate leader, Senator Yahya Abdullahi, to be their governor. And the then chairman, Atahir Machido, to be their deputy. That is, to be the deputy governor. But when we came in, we went around. I personally went around to convince the delegate that I don't know Senator Yahya Abdullahi by then, but I know Atuku Bagudu, his father, taught me in primary school in my hometown, Aleru. And uh, he also schooled in my hometown, Aleru, out to primary four or five. And uh, because of that relationship, I said we should go for Atiku Bagudu. And um, the people went for him without asking questions. So uh, in 2019, uh, the same thing happened. They also re-elected him uh, to be their flag bearer, and he got re-elected a second time governor. But uh, in preparation for 2023, he decided to remove virtually all the people that are close to either myself or Dr. Yahya, because he wanted to impose a candidate, a gubernatorial gubernator candidate of his own choice. And we felt that, no, democracy must be allowed to take its due course. Uh, he did all these things while we were watching. And we were tolerating him, we were being patient. We went to the extent of reporting the matter to the party headquarters. They intervened, but they couldn't get anywhere because the governor refused to listen to anybody. The president party chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, organized a meeting between myself and Dr. Haya and the governor, trying to reconcile us. And uh, it was even decided that, uh, look, he will have the choice of determining who his successor is. Uh, Yahya Abdullahi should uh, drop the ambition of being the governor, let the governor uh, decide on his successor, and let Haya go back to the Senate, and I go back to the Senate. I said, okay, we agreed if this is what the party wants. They say as a matter of policy, they have decided this in a number of states. They did that in the Mfara, they did that in uh, Ogun State, they did that in uh, Imo State, uh, they did that in Kano, and all these places, they agreed. And uh, uh, there was no problem. But in KV, the governor blatantly refused to cooperate with us and also with the party headquarters. And we felt that, uh, well, uh, we have been patient enough. Uh, our people were mounting serious pressure on us to leave the party. We said they should uh, exercise more patience. In fact, uh, the last attempt by the governor was when uh, he removed 20 aspirants that both forms is, got screened uh, either as members of the House of Representatives or, or as state assembly members. And when the time for primary came, their names were mysteriously uh, removed. And there was no time even to report to anybody. So they all made up their mind that, look, if they are not wanted in APC, they will leave the party and go and join any other political party. And mm -hmm. As leaders, we have to listen to whatever the people want. Otherwise, we can't do it alone. 
Politics is not done simply because you want to do something. If we are tolerant, we are patient, uh, not everybody will have that kind of patience. For nine months, we have been waiting for reconciliation, either by Mayor Mala or by Abdullahi Adamu or by even governors of the North to see what can be done. But all fell on deaf ears, as I said. And the only choice left for us, if we want to remain relevant in politics, was to move out of uh, mm -hmm. APC to PDP. And I'm happy we have done that. Uh, at least uh, tempers are now down. People are now happy with what has happened. And, uh, uh, so there we are. All right. Um, now you, are, you have joined the PDP, which is the main opposition party in the state and Nigeria. Don't you see this as a disadvantage? No, I don't think so. Because okay. uh, when we joined APC, we were also in opposition. And yet we were able to work hard and emerge victorious. We were able to win all the National Assembly elections. We were able to win the governorship election. We were able to win all the 24 seats of the state House of Assembly. So uh, I don't see that as, an, as a disadvantage. Um, all the factors that made us to win election in 2015 are now applicable in 2023. I don't think that we will have any problem. Okay. News reaching us also say you, you withdrew your participation uh, in the APC primaries for Kebi Central Senatorial District. And the natural question is, what next for you? Well, we have completed the primaries. We have filled the prescribed INEC nomination forms. Um, we have submitted to the party headquarters, and I'm sure the party headquarters will send the same to INEC. And uh, we will wait for INEC to give us time when we will start our electioneering campaign. And hopefully, uh, in the next two to three months, the INEC will give us a go ahead to start the electioneering campaign. And I can assure you, once we start doing that, there will be massive defection of people from APC into PDP. Because people believe in our leadership. People have confidence in what uh, we are doing. Uh, after all, it is the wish and aspirations of the people we responded to, not on our own accord. Now, you, this governor, Governor Atiku Bagudu, tried to become governor on the platform of the PDP in 20, um, 2014. He did not succeed and eventually had to cross to your party where within hours you allowed his dream of becoming the governorship candidate to come to fruition. Looking back, do you feel betrayed by a man that you allowed to leverage on your popularity to become governor? Do you admit that you made an error of judgment in allowing Atiku Bagudu to cross to the um, APC and become governor of the state? <clears throat> there was no error of judgment whatsoever in what I did. I still stand that I was correct. However, human beings can change, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, it is not peculiar to Kebi State alone. But actually, if you look at the whole states of the Federation, the story is the same. Whether you are talking of Zamfara, Kano, uh, Jigawa, uh, Akwaibam, uh, Rivers, the story is the same. 
uh, people that you help to become governors, they end up having issues with you. Uh, not necessarily because you wanted something, but simply because they want to boost their own ego. They want to be in control, and that's exactly what the governor wanted. He wanted everything to uh, be under his full control. Uh, and we told him that, well, you have the control of the government. Nobody will disturb you if you want to control the government. Uh, it's a noble area as far as we are concerned. We, we then tell you to appoint so so and so to a position, uh, either as a commissioner, a divider, or whatever. But the party is the vehicle that belongs to all of us. We don't allow anybody to come and dominate the party to the extent that uh, we will not have a vehicle to come and realize our ambition. I think that's the bone of contention. I don't feel, you know, betrayed. I don't regret the action I took in supporting him uh, to be the governor. Uh, rather, I leave him to his conscience, and I leave him also to the people of Kebbi State who will decide on whether he's right or wrong. At what point did you notice that Governor Bagudu had really changed? At what point did you begin to sense that this was not the person that you invested your support in? Mm. To be honest with you, I realized that as far back as 2017 and 2018, but I decided to be patient. I decided to swallow everything because I didn't want to pick quarrel with somebody I assisted to become governor, uh, regardless of uh, our differences. I felt the best thing that a, a leader should do is to find a way of managing the situation, unless if it is totally impossible before you can make it known outside. And that's exactly what myself and my followers had done in Kebi. Uh, either because of this issue of the world congresses and the local government congresses, maybe nobody will even hear anything about what uh, is happening in Kebi. Uh, I know what happened in other states. If you assist somebody to become governor, he will uh, dictate on who will become commissioner, who will become advisor, who will have appointment at the federal level. I never for once asked him to appoint anybody, either as a commissioner or as an advisor. Uh, I let him to, this, to form his own government, without any interference whatsoever. Uh, not even to assist people to get contracts. I never did that. And I want you to ask him. So, uh, the point of departure with me was when he wanted to control the party, total control of the party, to the extent of excluding anybody that is close to me or associated with me. That is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. Well, this thing keeps happening all the time. Keeps happening. Why? Why does? Why do we keep seeing this kind of behavior? We have by you help someone to get to political prominence, and then once that person um, uh, uh, receives your support and, be, and clinches power. It begins to turn against you. Why, why is this so rampant in Nigerian politics? What was going on? Yeah, I agree with you. It's very rampant in Nigerian politics. But it's human nature. And my own philosophy is that uh, if you assist somebody, don't expect to get anything in return. Do it because of the Almighty God. And whatever happens, you leave the man to his conscience and let the people decide. Uh, in, in most cases, 
nemesis will, will, will catch up with them. And that is the way I think uh, we should take it. Yeah, they no hard feelings whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it has happened. There is no way we can undo it. Uh, so uh, I, I leave everything to God. Yeah. All right, distinguished uh, Senator Alero, politics, regardless of the way we practice it here, is still a gentleman's game. Uh, but you are familiar with the statement that in politics, friendship is not permanent, enmity is not permanent, only permanent interest. When a quarrel goes on for too long between two prominent people, don't you think both, both parties are wrong? When you cannot be I reconciled. Don't think so. That is, that is only. Uh, <coughs> there can be two wrongs. Uh, I believe uh, one person will be at fault. Yeah. And particularly if you are in position or responsibility, if you are in position of leadership, you should be the one that should take the blame. Uh, if there is nothing that provokes you to behave in the way you do, uh, you should take the blame. And so, and as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, nobody has provoked the governor to behave in the way he did. After all, when he came into the party in 2015, he, he didn't know any single de delegate. And he got elected as the flag bearer of the party. Hmm. He was even reluctant in joining the APC or in going into the race. But we assured him that there is no problem whatsoever. Let's him come in. Uh, he will make it. So, uh, since we have made that choice, we didn't look back. Whatever he did, we simply ignore him. Whether it is in our interest or against our interest, we never bother to ask him. We never bother to question him. Uh, a time if there is need, both myself and the other senators uh, in the state, Senator Yahya Abdullahi and also Balan Allah, we do go and advise him. And at times we even ask the minister to join us because he represents the state and the Federal Executive Council. So uh, we do go and advise him not to Tell him that he must do this. No, just to give us advice on, just to give him advice on how things should be done. Uh, whether he takes it in good faith or not, it's left to him. All right. Um, now, as we sit here and you there, the APC and your now party, you, you, in the PDP have picked their flag bearers, uh, and you know what? Both flag bearers. Uh, what? Can you look at the into your crystal ball? Is it a plus for the APC, for the PDP? Is it what? I can't hear you properly. OK, both the APC and the PDP have their flag bearers for the presidential elections. Uh, mm -hmm. So do you do How, how will you assess the contest would, that is Yeah, it, 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 because you know both men. Yeah, I know both of them. Yeah. So how would you assess the contest that is uh, going to happen in uh, February next, next year? year? Yeah, certainly it's going to be a very keen contest between Aswa Jibola and Tunubu and former Vice President Atuku Abu Bakar. Both of them are well known to me. Uh, Myself and uh, Asua Jibola and Metunubu were governors from 1999 to 2007. And uh, we will remain good friends even after leaving the office as governors. We visit each other regularly. And uh, <clears throat> as for the former vice president, uh, he was my boss when we were in the customs service. And uh, when he became the vice president, I was also very close to him and we maintain very close contact with each other, uh, even though we're in different political parties uh, from 2015, well, 
2019 to uh, date, till recently, uh, when uh, I left, you know, the APC. He was in PDP. So um, I know the terrain is going to be very, very, there's going to be a very keen contest yeah. between the two of them. Uh, both of them are frontline politicians. Both of them have built uh, uh, bridges of uh, friendship across the different geopolitical zones, different states of the Federation, different ethnic groups, different religious groups. And uh, uh, both of them uh, have all it takes to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, it depends on how they campaign. And it also depends on who will be their enemies. Uh, is it going to be uh, somebody from uh, the uh, south east or the south south for Atiku Abakara? Or is it going to be somebody from the north central or the uh, northwest or the north east for uh, Asuaji Bola and Tunibu? This will determine uh, who will win the election. Or that will determine who will win the election. All right. Uh, if you are just uh, viewing in, this is a journalist hangout this evening having a one-on-one -on -one with former governor of Kebbi State, and uh, that's uh, Senator Adamo Aliero. And uh, we're asking him questions regarding what took him from the a ruling APC to the opposition PDP. Jide, you have the next uh, question okay um senator i want you to yeah. assess the chances of um, the pdp in your state now in the light of those defections that i talked about at the beginning of the program you are yeah. going to be up against the ruling party there's always the factor of the i mean there's always the incumbency factor in nigerian politics you are familiar with that already do you still genuinely fancy the chances of your party at forming the government in Kebbi State with this, with, with the fact that you have to contest against the ruling party? I feel very, very optimistic that the PDP will form government in Kebbi State. I'm very certain that. Uh, God willing, the PDP will win the governorship of Kirby State. Uh, based on what I know on the ground, based on the widespread support the PDP has in Kirby. For the last three months, we have been under tremendous pressure to move out of APC into PDP. Okay. And before we did this, we had to assess from the world level to the local government level to the state level. And uh, we found out that uh, there is mass disaffection, mass discontentment of the government, or, or, sorry, of the people uh, in Kirby State uh, because of non-performance of the governor because of the way the governor treats people. He doesn't stay in the state. He doesn't visit the local government headquarters, particularly if there is disaster or if there is a banditry attack here or there. He hardly goes there to condole people. Occasionally, you do see him going there to say hello. But uh, what I know in southern part of Kirby State, in particular, Zuri area, there have been several attacks. Mm. And the governor doesn't go and say sorry to the people or condole them or send relief material to them. Uh, we do shout in the National Assembly uh, by passing uh, resolutions 
I call you on NEMA to send relief materials to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, call you on security agencies to send security personnel to go and contain the acts of banditry uh, in either Zulu or in Yawuri. So, so you are saying, see the Senator, so you are saying in effect that he's, uh, he's an absentee governor? Almost. He, most of the time he's here in Abuja. He spent 85% uh, of his time here in Abuja. He doesn't stay in the state. It's a well-known fact. Okay. L let's talk about... Everybody knows uh, that. Let's talk about um, something else now, a little bit different see, from see, politics. See, see, no, no, quickly. Security mm -hmm. in your state now, now, as we, see, as we speak. What, what should we do? What needs to be done to improve security in, in Kirby State? Well, um, security is a collective responsibility, and the same goes. It is not only the federal government that should be left with the issue of handling security. The state government should also do something by way of encouraging uh, vigilante group, local volunteers. We had them in uh, Zuru Emirate, comprising of uh, the Kowasegu local government, Zuru local government, uh, Sakaba local government, and Fakai local government. And at one time, we had a very effective vigilante group that were driving away the herdsmen or the bandits from attacking the people in Zuri Emirate. But suddenly, uh, they were asked to withdraw. And since they were withdrawn, uh, there had been a lot of incursions. There had been a lot of attacks by the bandits uh, in Zuru and killing several people. There was even a time when over 25 security personnel were killed, both army and the police. Uh, more than 100 people were killed uh, 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 in one particular attack. And since then, it has been a recurring dismal. Uh, to the extent that uh, all the villages in Zoo Emirate are now converging into local government headquarters. Uh, people are even afraid that this year they may not be able to go to the farm and work and farm because the bandits have virtually taken over that uh, part of the state. Uh, some three or four days ago, there was an attack in Donkosegu and over 25 people were killed. Some are even saying that uh, it's well over 30 people that were killed. And this has been going on on a weekly basis. So the security situation in that area is bad, and it requires collective action on both the federal government and also on the state government. Uh, the state government can do a lot by empowering local vigilante groups to complement the effort of security agencies like police and the army. We even have a military formation in Zulu. And whenever there is any insecurity problem, the local government council chairman find it difficult even to contact the governor based on the information we are getting. They rush to the commanding officer in Zulu, he too is helpless because he doesn't have enough security personnel. So in that respect, I would strongly suggest that the federal government should do massive recruitment of soldiers in order to confront the insecurity situation in the country, not only in Kebbi, but the entire country. Because I believe that uh, the number of uh, soldiers we have is not adequate enough to take care of the security challenges we have. Equally, the policemen we have, the number of policemen we have is not enough 
to confront the security situation in the country. Okay. Uh, based okay, on the information we have, we, we don't have more than 380,000 policemen in the country. Yeah. And more than half of these policemen are devoted or are committed to guard duties, guarding the houses of ministers, mm -hmm. governors, political appointees, and what have you. So it means that uh, we have 180,000 or thereabout to take care of over 200 million Nigerians. Uh, thank, thank you, this distinguished. This is grossly inadequate. Thank we need to recruit at least up to 500,000 policemen to take care of the security challenges we have now. Otherwise, okay. we cannot go anywhere. Okay. Um, we wish you Godspeed as we make uh, Kebi and other states across the country peaceful. But let's talk about the happy times. I, I, I remember that Lake Rise was a revolution uh, credited to you. So what's the position of, with the rice production now? The rice production is still going on, even though it is seriously hampered by the insecurity problems we have or insecurity challenges we have in the state. We are hoping that uh, if we are able to overcome the security situation, the farmers will be able to go and farm and produce more rice. And uh, we have quite a number of uh, rice mills coming up. Some of them uh, on a very large scale, some of them medium scale, some of them on a very small scale. But uh, as long as we cannot produce paddy, the means uh, cannot be utilized because mm -hmm. there won't be enough raw materials unless if uh, we go to other states that are peaceful to bring in paddy, which is what we are doing now. No, uh, so you have the you have the largest Kaduna. You have the largest um, rice integrated rice uh, farm in the country currently, Lavana. To what extent yeah. uh, has your company been affected by this insecurity? And was that the reason why you had to go to Benin Republic to to set up a rice farm? Look, well, where, where my farm is, is not affected by the insecurity situation in the, in the country. It's in the northern part of the state, in the Bagodo local government. The insecurity challenges we have is in the southern part of the state. Even though we have a little bit of it in both the central and also in the northern part. But largely, it is in the southern part of the state. So uh, the farm I have in Bagudwe local government uh, is not enough to feed my rice mill. It's just slightly above 3,000 hectares. And I need close to about 15,000 hectares in order to feed my rice mill. So that's why we cross over to Benin Republic to uh, enter into agreement with the uh, Benin government to give us up to 10,000 hectares of land for cultivation of rice, and uh, the government of Benin Republic graciously agreed to give us that land, and we are very grateful. Yeah. Uh, we are almost in the process of uh, signing that agreement, they, and they as soon as we complete they they that, we will start production in, on, on a very large scale. Okay. Yeah, distinguished senator, we must uh, call it a day here, because time is a master, but we want to thank you very, very well uh, for your time. Uh, to talk with us and we wish you godspeed as you make peace uh, with your political friends thank you for coming thank you for the thank program. you my brother. i appreciate uh, you having me on this program and i hope to see you more and talk to you more okay thank then. you thank hopefully you. we'll be able to talk about your rice company in the future uh, we'll right. talk uh, 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 in detail Maybe in one next we meet. Okay. All right then. Thank you. Bye bye now. Okay, that's uh, uh, just about it on the program today. And don't forget to join us on Sunday for a two hour package on the Hangout. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Citizen Jones.
Bye-bye now.